Hello and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name's Jason and this is Lesney's Matchbox 39B Pontiac Convertible. It was in the range from 1962 to 1967. Models were initially painted a metallic violet and had a maroon base plate before it was recolored yellow with the base plate soon switching to black. My car here has been painted dark green and this has covered part of the interior too. The model is evidently missing its windscreen, which was green tinted, but these are commonly broken on second hand castings. Also broken is the tow hook. The casting is based on the second generation Pontiac Bonneville, specifically the 1960 model year, as seen here. Early castings came fitted with silver plastic wheels, though grey plastic wheels can also be found on rare versions. All examples had a cream plastic interior, but the earliest versions had a red plastic steering wheel fitted. This was then changed to the same colour as the rest of the interior later on. In addition to grey and silver, wheels on the yellow castings also came in black plastic, like this car. Here you can see the base is bent totally out of shape, so I'll shortly attempt to flatten this out. Underneath, you can see the original pale yellow shade of this casting. Here I have a reproduction windscreen that is clear rather than tinted as it should be. Generally, I much prefer a clear windscreen to a tinted one, but in this case, I have always considered the green tint a great contrast to the yellow paintwork. Now I will flatten out that base with a flat headed screwdriver and a few taps from my hammer. The casting had factory applied silver trim on the grille and front bumper. Alike many 1960s matchbox, the front bumper trim was omitted later in the run. The Bonneville was introduced in 1958 as a standalone model in Pontiac's range. Previously, the Bonneville name had been attached to a 1954 concept car called the Bonneville Special, a bubble topped vehicle based on the Chevrolet Corvette. In 1957, the Star Chief Custom Bonneville launched, which was a high performance luxury convertible version of the Pontiac Star Chief, with just 630 units produced. The 1958 standalone Bonneville launched as a two door convertible or hardtop. It had a 300 horsepower, 370 cubic inch V8, with fuel injection available as an option. Following that, in 1959, the second generation launched, where we start to see some similarities to this casting. It was available with a 389 cubic inch V8, again producing 300 horsepower. The second generation Bonneville was available as a two door convertible or coupe, but now also as a four door sedan, station wagon or hardtop. The model was known for its wide track, with its wheels pushed further out towards the fenders, giving it exceptional handling. Here I've been showing you another pale yellow Pontiac in much better condition. This was kindly sent to me by viewer and Patreon supporter Tony. It's in much better condition but serves to show just how light the colour could be on the castings. I plan to resto plus this model in the future, but for now, I'll carry on with my history of the Bonneville. So in 1960, the car had a distinctive facelift with a less noticeable split grille, which is what you can see on this casting. 1961 saw the introduction of the third gen Bonneville, with the series remaining Pontiac's top end model. The distinctive protruding grille was extended and became more prominent than on its predecessor. This generation spanned 1961 to 1964, and in 1965, the fourth gen launched. This ran until 1970 and continued with the twin stacked headlights that had been introduced in the 1963 models. 1968 cars had their headlights positioned side by side in twin clusters once more. This was the last generation to sit at the top of Pontiac's hierarchy, as in 1971, the Grand Ville was launched as top dog for the company's range. 
It was now only available as a two-door coupe or a four-door hardtop or sedan. Here I'm measuring up the replacement tow hook with an old offcut from a previous custom job. The sixth generation replaced the fifth generation in 1977 and was the last Bonneville to be based on GM's B platform. Until now, the Bonneville had shared its platform with the Buick LeSabre, Chevrolet Impala, Pontiac Catalina and Chevrolet Bel Air, as well as the Chevrolet Caprice from the fourth generation and also the Oldsmobile 88 since the fifth. Since the Granville was discontinued in 1975, the Bonneville was again Pontiac's range topper, but it was now significantly downsized. In 1981, GM pulled the plug and the Bonneville was no longer to be a full-sized car or in the Pontiac range. Also outgoing was the original Pontiac V8 engine. The Bonneville used GM's G platform in the seventh generation, with the name now attached to the smaller Pontiac Le Mans. This ran from 1982 to 1986. The eighth generation again changed platform to the new GMH platform from 1987 to 1991, and similarly for the ninth generation between 1992 and 1999. The 10th and final generation of the Bonneville spanned 2000 to 2005. This again switched back to GM's G platform, but the Bonneville was ultimately discontinued due to poor sales and a streamlining of GM's range. So now nearing completion, you may have noticed the shade of yellow I used was much darker than Tony's example from earlier. It's true that it is much darker, but the TS16 is the lightest Tamiya offered. I'm not a huge fan of the shade, but let me know how you feel about it in the comments section. I can now refit the clear window and clean plastic interior, which holds it in place. And then I can attach the black base with my reformed tow hook. It's then completed with a screw. So let's remind ourselves of how this car looked to begin with. It had been lovingly coated in a thick dark green that very satisfyingly dissolved in its caustic soda bath. It was of course missing its windscreen as well as the useful part of its tow hook. Some of the green paint had made it onto the interior plastics, but this either easily chipped away or came off in the soapy water. So now let's see how this painted Pontiac is now looking. As I said before, you will have to give your opinion on both the shade of the yellow, which I think is too dark, and the windscreen being clear instead of tinted, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Sadly, reproduction parts manufacturers only offered the screen without the green tint. Furthering my dissatisfied summary of this model, I also think it is massively lacking without any rear trim. The real Bonnevilles look great with the styled body surrounding the taillights. As such, a Resto Plus on Tony's model I feel is a must. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me for today. Please leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon and Instagram for all the latest. Links are in the description. That just leaves me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.